So jumping right in here with time management. The first piece of advice, the first suggestion is really be diligent about prioritizing your day. I really like this idea of if you could only get one thing done on a given day, what must that one thing be? Now, a lot of us are probably saying, I have so many things I need to get done, just doing one thing doesn't help. So a variation of this strategy is to figure out what your magic number of priorities is. Minus six. I, I do really well when I pick the top six things that I need to do on a given day, either the night before or first thing in the morning before I even turn on my computer and focus on those six things. For some people, and depending on what's going on in your life, maybe focusing on one thing is the ideal number for you. Maybe your number is 10. It's probably gonna take some trial and error to figure out what your magic number is. Choosing your magic number of priorities and focusing with a laser sharp focus on those things can be really helpful. All right, uh, time blocking. So I, I think probably most people have heard of time blocking in some form or fashion. So uh, the key to time blocking is to choosing a time, choosing a task, and turning off everything else, including emails, including text messages, including uh, Instagram, including Snapchat, and only focusing on one thing for the period of time that you determine. This can be tough. Variation on this is the Pomodoro technique. And Pomodoro comes from Tomato, the original guy who did this, had a little tomato-shaped kitchen timer. So the idea is you choose a task and you set a timer for 25 minutes and you work nonstop for 25 minutes. That's it, just 25 minutes. Then you take a five minute break and you repeat this. And after uh, you have four Pomodoros, then you go ahead and take a longer break. So if you're going to try this, try it with kind of an adventurous spirit. Think about um, you know, at the end of your Pomodoro trial, what worked well and if it could be tweaked to work better for you. I think it's important that we stop and think just for a minute about why we or a person that we know is procrastinating. Because the strategy to handle procrastination is going to be different depending on the reason why. To start working is not necessarily the solution if a person is procrastinating. So first, it is possible that you are really bored. It is possible you are very overwhelmed. It is possible for these things to happen simultaneously. If you have ever graded lab reports or student papers, I think you probably know what I mean. I think one of the best strategies here is to find meaning in the task. If I assign a meeting of I have to get through this stack of lab reports as quickly as possible, my motivation is very different than if I frame it for myself as I have to give feedback to students so they're able to improve their science writing. Framing the task differently gives me permission to be enthusiastic about it. If you work best under pressure, do it. Um, I, I think that things that would be helpful here, making sure that your schedule is clear right before a deadline that you know is coming, would be very important. But otherwise, if this is how you work best, I say go for it. If you have a student, uh, a grad student, and this makes you anxious, this is how they produce their best work. Maybe step back and let them be. As long as the work is done well by the deadline, I, I don't see a problem. I think this one is also very important. Um, when we are unclear about what's expected of us, when we don't have a deadline, when we don't know exactly what we're supposed to be producing, when we're just not prepared to take the next step, this can be paralyzing. And I know people who have dropped out of graduate programs because they just didn't 
know what to do, and so they were afraid to get started. Um, here, I think uh, some great tools are to make sure to ask clarifying questions. Uh, and these may be even questions that you're asking of yourself, sitting down and getting clear about what your goal, if this is a, a self-starting project. Reframing the task as a SMART goal. Um, SMART uh, acronym has a couple different meanings. Uh, generally specific, measurable, and then either achievable or attractive, and uh, relevant and timely. And there's lots of resources on the internet about writing SMART goals, if that's something you're unfamiliar with. Then I really like this idea about building momentum. If you can start with one small success, and then a second small success, and then those small successes tend to snowball into bigger and bigger progress. All right, and the last one here is, it is very possible, and very common, to have symptoms of anxiety and depression that lead to severe procrastination. So ways to recognize uh, kind of the border of procrastination for one of the other reasons and moving into a more clinical issue with anxiety and depression. Um, there's several areas of your life that you feel like you've lost interest in or are you constantly overwhelmed no matter what your situation is. Those two things can give you clues that it's more of a, a clinical problem than a situational problem. So we have lots of resources on campus for counseling, both uh, virtually and uh, therapy assisted online. Those links are at the end, and I'm sure uh, searching c.edu can help you find those as well. And I really want to stress here that these are biochemical imbalances in the brain. A person who is experiencing anxiety or depression that is leading to a temporary problem with productivity it doesn't mean that person is any less intelligent or lacks willpower or has abilities that are not equal to their peers. This is a biochemical problem and need medication or therapy to move through depression and anxiety should not just be encouraged should be normalized. Like it's normal for a person with type 1 diabetes to need insulin, or it's normal to need physical therapy after an injury so it heals properly. So we're going to move now through uh, ways that you can handle stress in the moment. Okay, so uh, this one, I, I love the name of this technique. I think maybe a lot of us have done this without realizing what we're actually doing here. So uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory or Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, uh, there was a character called Veruca Salt, and she just complained about everything. It was almost painful to listen to. Sometimes we need to express our frustration. Sometimes our stressful situation is such that we just need to get it out of our head. Sometimes it's not appropriate for us to do that out loud. Um, Got to keep FERPA in mind. If something's going on with a student, you have to be really careful about what you share with others. So, a way to handle this is to get pencil and paper or a little notebook, whatever you want to use. Set a timer. That's a really important step here. You want to have a bookend on your Veruca Salt time and spend five to ten minutes writing down processing through all the ways and all the reasons that the situation sucks. Because sometimes we just need to get it out of our head. And that's normal and that's fine. But a lot of people will find, if it's more of a minor kind of thing going on, that you kind of get tired of yourself after two or three minutes and you're just done. You're over whatever drama you had built up in your head. The other side of that, sometimes we get to the end of 10 minutes and we realize there's still a lot more to the situation that needs to be processed through. And if that's the case, um, trying other strategies would be really beneficial. Controlling our own stress response. So this first one, 
There are some days I do this all day long and nobody knows I'm doing it. Really simple, four by four breathing. You breathe in while counting to four, then you breathe out while counting to four. And that simple strategy that no one else has to know that you're doing can kind of take you out of the stressed talk in your head and bring you back to some semblance of focus. A variation on that is you breathe in for four, hold your breath for four, breathe out for four, hold your breath for four again, and complete that cycle four times. So that's four to the fourth breathing. And these are two things that uh, the research says Navy SEALs use when they are in the midst of a very stressful situation. Um, we did want to share uh, emergency resources. So for you or faculty or your, you or your students, um, there is a lot of things available. Um, USC has counseling services. Um, I'm, I believe that everyone, students at the very least get 10 free counseling appointments um, every year, um, take advantage of them. Um, I think that uh, faculty and staff also can get counseling as well. Um, and then there are also the national resources as well. Um, these are some stress reduction resources as well, some good books and some good apps. Um, so basically try out everything and see what works best for you.